beautiful afternoon. It has been so long since I've done a Jeep video. Uh, I'm, uh, I think I'm having withdrawals. But <clears throat> I do want to preface this video by saying I'm a, I'm a huge idiot. Um, and you're fixing to find out why. So I've decided to try and do something that uh, I probably shouldn't uh, because as I said, I'm, 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 I'm a moron sometimes and sometimes I get over my head, but uh, that's how we learn, I guess. So first, I bought this and I bought this and this. So as y'all can see, I'm going to re-gear my 8.8 .8 as I'm building it. I have a front end that's a 488 uh, gear set that I wanted to use, I've been wanting to use, I want to do 35 inch, I wanted my 35 inch tires to not bog, bog me down like it does sometimes, especially in fifth gear. 488s are steep, but I already had the 488 front end, so it was gonna be the cheapest just to match it. So I did go buy a 48 gear set for my 8.8 .8, uh, for Motive uh, gear, and this is just their standard uh, 488 8.8 .8 set. Uh, I didn't have, I have some of the tools for a good gear setup, but I didn't have all of them, so I did buy me a, an inch pound torque wrench uh, and a dial indicator with a magnetic base. These were very cheap versions, but from everything I see online, I'm not going to be doing this for a living. I'm not uh, going to be doing it multiple times, and these work just fine for my application. So uh, I think it was 35 bucks. This was like 20 bucks. And then I got the gear set uh, on Amazon warehouse deals for, I can't remember, it was cheap. It was like $75. Uh, and then I got a master install kit from USA Standard Gear, um, also from Amazon warehouse deals. I think this was $65. So all in all, I gained a couple tools that I can use in the future and I'm gonna wind up spending about eh, 100 and, 2550 bucks somewhere around there the master install kit comes with everything i should need all the bearings the shims the carrier bolts this little gasket i probably won't use seals uh, everything i should need to, to to have a fresh install of the gear set in 8.8 .8. uh, of course i'll be using the stock carrier because it is a limb to slip carrier and we will learn as we go i'm not doing this today but I did want to give an 8.8 .8 update because I have not updated a Jeep build or the 8.8 .8 in a long time. All right, my lighting kind of sucks, but uh, here's where we're at with the 8.8 .8 from a teardown perspective. Uh, I've got all the brackets off the tubes. Still got a little bit more uh, grinding to do. I say grinding, but wire wheeling to do. Um, I did take the cover off, inspected it. Everything looks great. As you can see, it is a limited slip. Uh, so that was accurate and over the stock gears uh, everything looks good the uh, oil wasn't burnt uh, there's no real wear on the gears there was no metal in it so everything's in good shape now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and, and start placing the brackets where they need to be uh, and setting the pinion angle i haven't set the pinion angle yet but when you're setting these brackets on here uh, the way Barnes has them made, the flat goes to the uh, back of the axle and the circle goes to the pinion side. A good way to remember is the spring's offset to the front of the vehicle. And as you can see, uh, this spring is offset to the front of the vehicle or the pinion side of the axle. Uh, you could easily get the sides mixed up and then your axle would be about an inch and a half, two inches to, uh, too far into the Jeep. These uh, will angle from inside to out uh, for the uppers. Uh, so it'd be easy to get those screwed up too. I will be getting some measurements off the internet. You could pull your old axle out. This is going to be a multi-day project, so I can't do that. You could take all the measurements from it. Uh, however, uh, I'm going to stand on the shoulders of others who have done this before because they've already done the research and why would I redo it? So I'm going to get some measurements off the internet from Stu Olson, uh, who has a long standing Jeep site for TJs uh, that have a lot of good information on it. So he's already done the measurements for me. Let me get those and we'll talk a little bit about that. Set that pinion angle and uh, start tacking. All right, using a very simple magnetic based uh, angle finder, uh, I'm gonna find 15 degrees, which I did. I just used a jack stand with some shims, uh, cardboard shims under it. 15 is the general consensus on a four inch, whoops, on a four inch TJ lift um, on what this angle needs to be set at. I could play around with it all day and, and get it wrong. So I'm just gonna go with, by what other people have successfully done. And I will have fully adjustable control arms on the rear 
uh, which will allow me to adjust the pinion angle more. So I don't have to get it perfect. I just have to get it close. And 15 degrees is going to get me close on four or four and a half inches of lift. So once uh, you get the spring pads kind of where you want them, uh, you can level them out with just a little bullet level like I got here. And you can see I just level those flat uh, while the pinion angle is still set at 15 degrees. I've generally got these where they need to go. Uh, Barnes uh, 4x4 website, 4 drive website also has uh, some instructions on them. And their instructions are to have the outside of their brackets on the top to be 46.938 inches, which is very specific. Uh, I got them to about 46.9 something. I didn't get them to exactly uh, 46.938, I'm sure. I'm probably uh, 800 hundredths of an inch off or so. I do know that they are centered properly because I've got them the right width and they are the same width on each side or same distance from the backing plate on each side. So they're two, about two and three quarter inches from the backing plate on each side um, approximately. So that means the axle would be centered as it sets now if according to Barnes um, measurements, I'm at basically 47 inches and then uh, onto the backing plate on each side, I'm the same distance, which I am. So those should be centered and those, uh, when you measure those from the side of the pumpkin uh, to the center line of the bracket, uh, they do match up to what Stu Olson has on his site. Generally, they, they're off by maybe an eighth of an inch um, or even a sixteenth of an inch here and there. And that's really probably my measuring as opposed to the actual measurements themselves. Another thing I want to call about these Barnes brackets is you can see I'm going to have them tacked together. The, the, the spring pads do come in three pieces. They come in the, the base that cup and then that uh, top part up there there is a nut that needs to be welded on the back side here that i didn't do and that is so you can put the bump stops on there my act my jeep actually has bump stops in the top as opposed to on the axle which is a little bit different than than some of the later jeeps so i may not even worry about going back and trying to weld that nut in there uh, simply because i don't have a reason to so just in case anyone want to know what a wire wheel on a drill will do to the back side of your hand if it gets caught in your glove, uh, that. And that sucks. It does not feel good. All right, I've got both of the spring perches located. I'm going to start with the spring perches because they're the biggest ones uh, and everything else can locate off of them. Uh, you can see that I welded uh, the cups all the way around. And of course I did that on the back side, on the underside. That way the top still looks nice and pretty especially for when I paint it so now that I've got these level and I've got them spaced properly uh, I'm going to go ahead and tack these into place so I can start setting the other brackets up there and figuring out exactly where they are All right, when you're locating these upper control arm mounts, again, you want them centered and you want them equidistant to the edge of the axle and you want them the right distance apart. So Barnes provided a distance of 23 and 9 sixteenths uh, between the inside edges of their brackets should be generally right. Now they also suggest that you take the old axle out and take all your measurements off it to ensure that you're correct. I'm putting a custom suspension and um, Although it's still going to be the, the, the stock suspension, I am putting con adjustable control arms with new bushings and a lot of new parts, uh, adjustable track bar and things like that. So, uh, you know, I've got a little wiggle room if I need it. But generally, I've got them right now 23 and 9 sixteenths apart. And the good news is, as I have them there, it's equidistant from the edge of the outside of the bracket to the backing plate on both sides, which means they're perfectly centered and they're the right distance apart. This is a round tube, obviously, so you can have different different angles here. All right, from what I can tell how this all goes together, this piece right here will go to the back side of that and, and line up, uh, which makes me believe that the angle that this is cut is the same angle that those need to be tilted forward, uh, which in this case is a, a 10 degree tilt. Uh, so that's going to be 80 degrees, not 90 degrees. Uh, to match the angle that's cut on that on that other bracket So I'm fixing a weld on my or tack on my last bracket. So you can see I've tacked on the sway bars uh, I've tacked on this side control arms 
upper control arm, upper control arm this side, sway bar bracket, trap bar bracket, and then this is the last one. Again, I used the Barnes uh, direction sheet and I also used Sue Olson's website, which gave me a lot of the measurements and I kind of used both of them combined. To locate these, Stu's website had perfect dimensions from the pumpkin, 12 and 7 16 from this side, 15 7 16 from this side. They both lined up perfectly to the top coal buckets, which means I got the coal buckets in the right place as well. All right, guys, we're going to end the video there. Uh, the 8.8 .8 is coming along. It's coming along a lot slower than I thought, but uh, but it is coming along, so that, that's, that's a huge positive. Uh, I do think that a few more days and I'll have it done, but I don't know when those few days will be. It might be a week from now, it might be uh, a few days from now, I don't know. Uh, we will uh, get it done. And I will be moving forward on the Jeep as rapidly as possible. So, so bear with me, there'll be a lot of content coming out. Uh, if, if you like the video, uh, please hit the like button. Uh, if you see something that helps you out, hit the subscribe button because there will be more coming. Uh, coming up, I will be working a little bit on a front axle that I'm going to be putting in it. Just another Dana 30, but it's going to have some Cromali axle shafts and things like that. And I'll be working on the actual gear install uh, before I burn everything in. So, forward for all of that. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day.